Hello everyone, sorry about no video yesterday, I was really busy uh, brushing up on the whole negotiation saga between Lasker and Capablanca, those guys were really insane and uh, well you'll just uh, have to wait and see. Uh, the negotiations before the match are, are just as important as the match itself, it's uh, uh, really... Uh, a, a lot, of, a lot of pages uh, of negotiations. Uh, he, this guy sends letter to this guy, then uh, this guy sends letter to this guy, then uh, two other guys uh, get included in the negotiations, and then they start sending letters. Uh, it's really crazy, and uh, well, it it will take me some time to make sense of uh, everything. Uh, but uh, until I uh, make that video ready, and I do hope to make it ready today, we do return to this uh, Leela uh, onslaught uh, that goes on uh, in the in the season 14 of the TCEC, the top chess engine competition. We already uh, mentioned two days ago that Leela has won the cup and now uh, Leela faces the mighty Stockfish in a 100 game match. And uh, it's a it's a different version of Stockfish, a stronger version of Stockfish, and uh, they are uh, they will be playing uh, in these 100 games. Um, uh, well, they will be using an opening book, but uh, they will be using uh, openings with uh, very aggressive lines. So one lines that one would not uh, choose uh, if it uh, uh, well weren't forced to play it, uh, such as this game. It, this game was recommended by you guys. Um, uh, a lot of you have recommended, it, and it's really a nice game. Uh, where Stockfish goes for the French defense and, uh, well, you just have to wait and see. Uh, but yeah, uh, as usual, uh, the link will be in the description below. Uh, you can follow the live match. It's a 100 game match. They are only, I believe, at game 25 currently or maybe 24. Uh, but yeah, feel free to follow the match. So let's get to the game. Uh, Leela has the white pieces and we have E4. E6, like we mentioned, the French defense is on the board. Uh, and now Knight to D2, the Tarash variation of the French. Knight c6, uh, we have knight g to f3, uh, knight to f6, and now comes e5, uh, forcing the knight back. We have knight to d7, and now comes knight to b3. Uh, this is still a, par a part of the opening they are forced to play. Uh, we have b6, and now c3. And uh, this position has only been reached once uh, in uh, over-the-board human play, and I have prepared this for you, so you can check it out. Uh, it was played in 2001 in Harkani between uh, Johan Haas and Gyula Mezaros. Uh, and in this game, as you can see here, uh, it's a game between players rated uh, 2068 and 2349. The game ended in a draw. So, uh, not a popular line. And in that game, a5 was played here. Uh, we have knight to e7. So, as you can see, now this knight is uh, uh, supporting the push of the c5 pawn. This knight is maybe coming to g6, maybe to g5, maybe to f5. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, Lila goes for h4, uh, preparing to expand even further on the, on the king's side. We have c5. Uh, black now, as usual in the French, has this massive pawn, pawn chain and uh, still has to decide how to develop the pieces. Uh, we have h5 by Leela, h6, and now knight to h4. A useful move, one of the rare occasions where knight on the rim is not grim or dim. Uh, but uh, the knight here supports uh, the g6 square, uh, but not, not so much needed as the pawn does a great job of that. But uh, more importantly, it covers the f5 square. Uh, also, it makes room for white to push f4 and expand further on the king side. Uh, we have c4. Uh, knight comes to d2 and now b5. Stockfish slowly expands on the queen side as there's nothing going on the, on the king side for the moment and the center is blocked. Uh, we have queen g4. Uh, now comes a5 by Stockfish, grabbing even more space on the queen side. Uh, bishop to e2 and now a4 even. And here a3. So now even the queen side is completely blocked. It's unlikely black will ever get to push b b4 and white will... Uh, it's unlikely that white will ever get to push b3. The center is pretty much closed, so any possible pawn break that might happen is either black can go for f6, unlikely, or white can go f4, f5. So these are, for the moment, possible uh, breaks uh, on the king's side. Uh, knight b8. As the position is now closed, Stockfish is now remaneuvering. We have f4 by Leela, knight b to c6, and now comes knight to f1. Uh, this knight uh, wants to come to e3 to support the df5 square even further. Uh, we have knight to a5. Stockfish now has this very nice outpost on b3 for his knight, and uh, he will use it. Uh, we have bishop to e3, making room for the rook to move if the knight ever lands on b3, uh, which it does. Knight b3, rook to d1, uh, and now you have this position here where... Uh, well, the entire position is pretty much blocked. Uh, Stockfish grabbed all this space on the queen side. He has a very nice uh, knight on b3. 
that's uh, okay you do have a very nice knight on b3 but it's not really doing all that much uh, and on the other hand you haven't really developed any of your pieces uh, nor are you sure where to develop them for example if you try something like knight f5 uh, to start something then bishop f2 simply getting that bishop out of the way and now black will <coughs> uh, either capture which will only help white attacks the queen queen moves now you can go knight e3 uh, this rook can come to f1, you can push f5, white is getting too much out of this. And if you try something like knight f5 after bishop f2 and knight back to e7 to hope for some sort of repetition, then white will just continue knight f3, gain further control of the f5 square, and black will have to figure out another plan. Uh, so after this rook to d1, uh, we have king to d7. Uh, Stockfish now has a really cool plan, he wants to hide his king all the way on, on, on a5. Uh, and only then open up the king side. Uh, we have bishop to f2, making room for the knight on e3, king to c7, and now knight e3. We have king to b7, queen to h3, and now uh, if you try something like king to c7 or a slow move, then white could start pushing g4, f5, and open up uh, the, the position before black is ready. So black decides to take matters uh, in, in his own, own hands. We have g5. Uh, H captures on g6, on passant, we have F captures on g6, and now g4. And black continues with the plan. Uh, you could try something like g5, but it's not gonna do anything. Knight goes here, you can capture, knight captures, and again, uh, black will be forced to, for the rest of the game to deal with the e6 pawn, the backwards weak pawn, but there's not all that much black can do about it. Uh, so after g4, king e, uh, a6, if a stockfish continues with the plan, uh, we have knight h to g2. Uh, and now comes rook to g8. Uh, we have bishop to f3 and now king to a5. And now if you look at this king on a5, uh, that is a very safe king. I mean, you are not getting, uh, you are not getting uh, through to that king. Uh, no way. Uh, bishop to h4, pinning the knight here. Uh, also taking further control of the f5 square as the knight will be unable to recapture anything that is on, uh, on f5. So g5. Uh, we have bishop to g3, g captures now uh, on f4, bishop captures would be not so great as knight g6 could allow black to untangle a bit. So after g captures, we have knight captures, taking further control of uh, the g6 square, uh, sorry about that, and also bishop to h4 will be a threat once again. Uh, rook to a7, now after the knight moves, the rook can come help out with the defense on the king side, and we have bishop to h4, again pinning this knight here. <coughs> uh, bishop to d7. Uh, black develops the light square bishop. Now the bishop can also come to e8 to help out with the defense. Uh, and here white just castles uh, king side. There's no uh, problem with this uh, rook being on the g file. For the moment h5 is not possible. So queen to e8. Stockfish prepares h5. Uh, we have rook to f2 and now h5. Here of course you cannot capture it as we already mentioned that the g pawn is pinned from the rook on g8. So after h5 we have g5. Grabbing more space, and now Leela's plan is completely different. Uh, yes, you do uh, release some of your control over the f5 square, uh, but now you have a great outpost on f6 for any piece that might land on it. Uh, we have knight to g6. Uh, knight captures, queen captures, and now bishop to g2, making room for this rook to come to, to f6. Uh, Stockfish doesn't want the rook to come to f6 uh, with an attack on the queen, so first queen to e8. Uh, we have rook to f6 and now comes bishop uh, back to c8, making room for the other rook uh, to uh, come help out with the defense. Uh, queen to g3 and now comes rook to c7. And here comes bishop to h3. Now white is starting to pile up uh, against uh, this e6 pawn. We have bishop to g7 and now even king to h2. Not uh, uh, Lila doesn't want after this uh, <laughs> rook is captured by the bishop that the, the king and the queen are on the same uh, file. So what do you do here? Uh, well, obviously bishop capture seems interesting, but after e captures... Uh, white has two connected pass pawns and it will be very hard to defend against this. For example, the rook is already under attack. You have to move it or you have to protect it. King f7, queen f7 blocks the pawns and also protects the rook. Uh, rook g1, now threatening g6 and now you can play rook g6. And okay, now you have your rook and your queen uh, stuck guarding the two pass pawns. Queen d6, you allow the white queen to infiltrate and it's, uh, it's a very dangerous queen uh, that has a lot of options. So once black trades the queens, uh, for example, queen d7, queen captures, bishop capture. You can't capture with the rook because of bishop captures on e6. Uh, so after bishop captures, you would get f7. And here black is just lost. 
uh, you have to go something like rook c8 to defend the queening square. Uh, but now you get even knight captures on d5 with some with some very nice ideas. Pawn captures, bishop captures here, rook to f8 blocking, but now even bishop to e6 defending and uh, black is without a move here. Uh, the king is here uh, so <laughs> keeping the knight away from entering the game. Uh, but there's really no uh, other move. You could try something like that, or you could try capturing the bishop, and then you simply get g6, and it's all over. You can deliver a check or something, but uh, there's there's no stopping the two pass pawns. Whatever you play, king b6, then this is coming, captures, and the queen is into the game. So uh, not something you want to do, capturing this rook. A rook to f7 was played by Stockfish, and now we have knight to g2. Just ignoring uh, the attack on the rook on f6, this knight is now coming to f4. The queen is coming to e3, and the, the attack against the backwards uh, e6 pawn will be unstoppable. Uh, king to a6, finally making room for this knight to enter the game, but now queen to e3. Again, if you capture the rook, uh, it will not be any better, because after this pawn captures, there will also be an attack uh, from the queen towards the e6 pawn. Uh, so, uh, we have king to a7, and now comes knight to f4. Uh, rook to e7, and now comes rook to g1, supporting the g5 pawn. Uh, we have king to b8, and now even g6 is coming. Now, taking away the queen's control of the h5 pawn, so now even capturing that pawn is a possibility. Uh, rook to h8, defending the pawn, and now comes rook to g2. Uh, just improving the position, as the quote above the board says, never make a good move too soon. Uh, king back to a7, seeing what Leela has prepared, and now comes queen back to f2. Uh, and here, there's no really, uh, there's really no good way to defend the e6 pawn. <coughs> Uh, the queen f2 move uh, is aimed at going for queen to f7 check once everything is exchanged on e6. So just to give you an idea of what Lila planned here, if you try something like knight f5 to try and get the knight into the game, then comes bishop captures on e6. And even though black is defending the e6 square uh, more times than white is attacking it, the tactics work in white's favor. Uh, bishop captures, just simply knight captures, rook captures, rook captures, and queen captures. And now black is up a piece, but it's a, it's a knight on a5. So queen to f7 check. And now you either have to move and lose the queen, or you have to trade queens. Queen captures, g captures. Now again, you create two connected pass pawns, and you don't have time to act uh, as your bishop on g6 is under attack. You have to move the bishop, bishop h6, but now comes e6. And finally, you do get to activate your knight, but it's uh, far too late. Rook g8. Uh, and okay, you don't have to capture. You, ha you, you do have the option of moving it. The bishop is controlling f8, but uh, simply bishop g5. Either forcing black to capture, and then you get a queen, or black has to move. Bishop g7, and now you even get e7 in. Now black has to give up a knight, knight captures, bishop captures, and again, uh, you will win a piece once this pawn reaches here. For example, bishop h6, now you can go bishop c5 check, let's say king a6, you can even go rook b8, uh, and now you force black to capture, e either that or you're, you're winning a piece. But after black captures, now you create a windmill, uh, you force... Uh, uh, the king either to go to a5 and then the king will be checkmated for example uh, if uh, king to a5 then rook captures on h6 uh, and now whatever you do let's say you go rook f2 check king moves rook goes back you have to give up but uh, at one point uh, you are getting checkmated uh, so that's not really n n nothing you can do here uh, or after rook b6 check you will go here and then you just lose the rook rook f6 check king b8 rook captures and you are down a rook and losing the game so, after this queen to f2 move, you don't really have a way of stopping bishop captures on e6. So, Stockfish finds a different way uh, to defend. Uh, we have rook to b7. Now, just giving up the pawn straight up, uh, but uh, with, with a different idea. Bishop captures on e6. We have bishop captures, uh, sorry, not that, but bishop captures uh, on, uh, on f6 first. Uh, we have bishop captures on f6. Now, bishop captures on e6. And now, bishop captures on h8. And now Stockfish doesn't recapture because of knight captures on e6. First knight to g8, and now bishop returns to f6. So uh, Stockfish is still alive, but still two, two passed pawns. It's not going to be easy. Uh, knight c1, uh, Stockfish tries to finally activate this knight, but now queen e3. Uh, attacking the knight uh, forces Stockfish to either go back, stay passive, uh, or go knight to d3. Which Stockfish does? We have knight captures, pawn captures, and queen captures. Uh, losing yet another pawn. Uh, and rook to b8. Uh, we have king to g3. Now uh, Lila just starts improving the position. Bishop e6. King to h4. 
king to b7 and now even g7. Uh, the bishop for now is controlling the g8 square so it's not that big of a deal. Uh, queen to d7 and now rook to g5. Uh, we have rook to c8 and now rook back to g1. Uh, bishop to f7 and now queen to f3. Uh, we have queen to e8 and now comes rook to f1. Preparing to move the bishop and uh, well there will be some discoveries here. Uh, so rook to c7 bringing a further control uh, towards the, the, the f7 square. Queen to d3 now just uh, trying to get black into some sort of a tsukzwang. Uh, which uh, <clears throat> black can't really avoid uh, with, with much success. Uh, bishop to g8 and now king to g5. And now there's really not all that much you can play. You can't really move the rook if you go rook d7. You, the queen no longer controls the b5 pawn. You can't go here. You can't go f7. Uh, if you go king uh, rook f7, uh, then, well, the queen is no longer protecting the h5 pawn, but the real threat is queen g6. Now completely uh, pinning black and uh, uh, there's there would be nothing black could play here. Uh, or you could try uh, something like king b6, just moving the king, but again, queen g6 forces a queen trade and also threatens discoveries. Uh, so not, not all that many moves you could do here. Uh, you can't really... <clears throat> Uh, nothing nothing for you to do. You can't move the queen. The queen has to keep an eye on the b5 pawn. So black tries a different active plan. b4. And okay, a captures some b4 and now rook to c4, hoping to block off the position. At least now the queen will not be able to land uh, on b5, so now the white, the black queen can move. Uh, king to h6. Uh, we have queen to e6 and now queen to f5, offering a queen trade. Of course, black cannot, offer a, uh, black cannot accept a queen trade as uh, he is down material. Uh, we have queen back to e8, and now uh, we have rook to f3. Uh, rook to c6, and now finally queen captures on h5, uh, grabbing that pawn. Bishop to f7, queen back to f5, and now uh, bishop to e6. Queen to g6, offering a queen trade. Bishop to f7, Stockfish repeats the position a few times, and now queen to d3. Uh, again, threatening queen b5 check, so we have rook to e6. The queen again has to keep an eye on the b5 square. King g5 and now queen to c6. And here we have rook to g3. Uh, rook to e8 and now rook to h3. The rook is now threatening to come to h8. We have rook to g8 and now rook to h8 would be possible here. But for some reason, Lila first goes rook to h4. Uh, we have queen d7, uh, king back to f4. We have bishop to e6 and now rook to h7. Uh, we have king to b6 and here we have rook to h6. And after king to b7... <coughs> Uh, it was in this position that Stockfish resigned the game. Uh, uh, it's been pointed out to me that it's not like in the match Alpha Zero versus Stockfish that uh, if uh, too much time uh, passed before uh, either side made a move, then it was considered resignation. Uh, here, if both engines agree, yeah, one of the winning conditions is if both en uh, Lila and Stockfish agree that uh, the advantage the other side has is above uh, 10 centipon, then uh, it is considered a resignation. Uh, so yeah, after king b7, uh, we do have a resignation. Uh, why <laughs> why black resigned? Well, he is down uh, four pawns, that's one. And uh, on, on the other hand, after queen to g6, there's really not all that much you can do. You can try bishop f7, uh, but then comes queen g2. This would be the idea. Uh, now, after this bishop moves, you can see that the rook is controlling this entire sixth rank. And also, c4 is a threat, as the queen is uh, on the same diagonal as the king. So you could try king b6 moving the king, but then bishop to d8 check, and uh, you can see that now. Uh, it's a double check from the bishop and the rook. Uh, white, white will be breaking through. On the other hand, after something like bishop to e6, uh, you will push c4, and uh, you will break through. King a7, you can push c5. After queen b7, you can push even b5 here. Black doesn't really have much options here. Queen will capture, and now bishop to d8 will break through. You are you open up the attack from the rook to the bishop. Uh, after queen e8, you are finally getting in queen g6, and now after queen captures, rook captures. Uh, bishop f7, you are going to go bishop b6, check, king to a6, and now king to f5. You don't, you no longer care about your rook. Uh, bishop captures, king captures. Now, next move, you will play king f7, and you will get a pawn, uh, a queen here. You will capture black's rook. Let's say you go black plays something, not really all that much black can play. You go here, rook moves. Uh, you bring a queen into the game, black can capture, you can capture. And now, uh, it's a completely winning position. There is no move black can even play. You can go... Uh, for this pawn, but then all, 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 all of the pawns are promoting and, and it's game over. 
Uh, but yeah, uh, Stockfish ha wanted to have nothing to do with this after King to B7. Uh, it was uh, the game was over. Uh, and move 77, or sorry, 76. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game from the TCEC Super Finals. Uh, I believe uh, that Lila won. And uh, like I said, the first thing in the description below were, will be the link where you can follow this match live. I forgot to mention the match is being played uh, in classical time control, so it's uh, really going to take a long time. Uh, to, to finish this match, but uh, we, we, uh, we will get some very interesting games. As uh, now, uh, Stockfish had to play this version of the French defense, then Lila has to play this exact version of the French defense, and Stockfish can push for a win with the white pieces. And so they will go through every uh, opening, and uh, we will get very exciting games that we would uh, often not see. Perhaps it would be better for Lila if uh, they played without any opening theory, uh, as that's how Lila trained, same as Alpha Zero. Uh, but uh, maybe the games uh, wouldn't be this interesting as, as this way the one side always has an advantage from the beginning and then it's interesting to see how the other side will defend and how the side that has the advantage will, will push for the win. And uh, also you might get ideas as if you will face these openings yourselves, uh, you can get some ideas how, how to break through. Uh, so yeah, uh, do check out the live event, uh, also some other uh, very interesting links in the description below, like uh, a link to Lila Chess Zero blog, where they will often inform you about everything that happens, so feel free to follow that as well. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Marcio Tondin, uh, Jonathan Tolan, uh, Solid Systems, uh, David Tenorio and Oscar Cab Cabrera for a contribution to my channel, thank you a lot, I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check to all my previous videos here, thank you all for watching. And I will see you soon, uh, most likely uh, with the Lasker versus Capablanca, the negotiations. Uh, thank you all, and I'll see you soon.